for making the pancakes. And I don't want to uh, talk too much, but here we use this uh, controller that we wrote. It basically just opens up uh, every container here. Uh, you see, we were tipping with the fingertips against this because we had a good laser perception, but still this can be off by a centimeter or two. And by just using this tactile feedback of touching the handle before we grasp it, we have a pretty, well, we have a pretty good estimate of where it is actually, and then we can just grasp it right away. Here you see how it's always just pulling some, somewhat in a direction, and this is using the compliance. So basically we just pull and see where it goes. It will always follow the, the trajectory of the uh, smallest uh, force. And then we are adjusting with the feeling of the fingertips the orientation. These handles are very good for that, of course. We can feel how the, the center of the pressure in the fingertips changes when the handle And the problem you also saw that the base was moving during this. So often we run into the problem that we open some container and then we run into the, the, the limit of the, of the robot's capability with the arm. And then of course we just move the base a little. And, and this is not very well integrated. You see it's first going like this a little and then with the arm. So this is not really nice so far, but it works. And this would be our idea of what to do first. So if we come into a kitchen, we just scan the whole kitchen with a laser, try to detect handles, and then pull and see what's going on. And then we would look into this, these containers and find out what's in there, and write that down in the semantic map again. So now we will also calculate a pose for the base. You see it's very, very restricted space there. So we have to calculate a pose how we could find a, a, a place for the robot to, to, uh, to execute this trajectory of getting out this bottle. And now we will just go along the trajectory that we had before to close the container again. So, I yeah, hope it's not, yes, we a little of the camera, sometimes it's awesome. And, yeah, this was not really a trailer, we are flying with the sometimes. Um, and just as a warning, uh, Willow Garage tries to make these robots very safe and one uh, point of this policy is that whenever something in the real-time system behaves strange, you just shut down the, the motors. So this happens about like once a day when we use the robot a lot. That some package in, from some EtherCAD controller comes like a few milliseconds late and it's just dropping the plate on the ground. And I mean this is just safety policy we can't get around and I hope it's not happening. Usually it's not happening too often. But if you see that, uh, we're warned. So it could happen that it just drops and then you see it just going. And uh, another thing I would like to say, uh, different from this, from Rosie, which has a lot of, uh, uh, how do you say, high end uh, torque centers in the joints, this robot uh, uses springs to, uh, to implement the compliance. So the arms are actually developed <coughs> with two gas uh, springs. Um, so it can also get into some strange dynamic behavior. Of course, if you actually then the plate hopefully with a pancake to serve a fully robot made pancake. No, so that's my colleague Alex. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is replace the pancake mix by a live one. Liquid. So, put it over there. Okay, so um, this is Tom Rosie. I'm going to show it to you later. And we're going to be repeating this demo, I hope, during the whole lunch. <laughs> uh, so if you are not in front, uh, don't worry, you'll be able to see it again later. Um, so you're making pancake for everyone? I, well, we might run out of milk. But I hope everybody gets a piece. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is Rossi Abramo, we have built it from scratch from um, the split component. So as you see, we have the Just very nice um, so Luca by my arms. <laughs> and we have the we have impedance control on these arms, active one, and um, also on the fingers. And uh, we're going to start with the demo. So I'll be able to show you here what the robot actually see. And for those who cannot see it, then I'll explain verbally. Okay, so green light. So, uh -huh. So we have a set of scripts and now it's actually going to execute a plan to, to actually make pancake. The first thing it's going to look for is for a pancake mix. And um, what you see here is the 3U. So those are the 3D points. 
and uh, it will plan a trajectory and move towards it. So this is recalculated every millisecond because you might push on the arms and might need to adjust if it's blocking against something. Okay. So um, right now it's gonna search on the table for a pancake maker. Okay. And we're gonna try to drop the mixture in the center. So this is um, <laughs> By, uh, uh, vision right now. Uh -huh. So the first one is using the, uh, the time of flight camera, and this one is using the, the images to find a pancake okay. And now we can see if we actually managed to make a pancake. Okay, good. So that looks good. Uh, like a this is the way uh, that it feels on its hand to decide how long it is uh, poor. So for example, when the bottle is very empty, it's important that it flips more and just and it waits a bit longer. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our spatula or our tool. Okay. And um, here we check or by uh, yeah, looking at for it again. Now it looks like a bit bigger. You see we, we actually made a huge mount for it. And the reason is that these hands are about twice as big as human hands, and they don't have a one degree of freedom that we have with this this one. And what the robot is doing right now is uh, it looked at it um, and it tried to get an idea of where the spatula is relative to its hand. Okay. And uh, right now I will probably sleep for a little bit. 20, 22 seconds. Okay, for 22 seconds because uh, we have told it that one side of the pancake needs around 90 seconds to cook. Okay. And now it's basically waiting. So hopefully next year we'll have two pancake makers and then we'll have uh, cereal production of pancake. Okay, um, and now here comes the part where I hope everything works. So this is uh, this is the tricky part for a robot, and that's flipping a pancake because it requires a certain dexterity. Okay. So we're gonna see. It should detect the collision with the pancake, which it did with the pancake maker. And now it leaves. And now it's gonna flip. Yes. <laughs> Now we have to wait. <laughs> the boring part of the, of the demo because uh, this part takes about nine seconds. Um, but in the meantime, the PR2 is already preparing the table, as you see over here, and it has brought um, cutlery. And uh, the next thing we will do is uh, put it down, and then when that pancake is ready, it will pick it up over here. So, yeah, if you have uh, questions. And now comes the second difficult part for a road. I don't know if we'll manage this one. So we have to hope. Uh, and that's actually getting the pancake off the surface. And this is difficult because um, right now everything is um, very slippery. And, uh, okay, we have a little problem. <laughs> <laughs> and before that, here, yeah, put that So the difficult part is that um, once, the, once the packet has cooked and everything is left on, you have to push it really quickly. And then the dynamics of the arm play an important role here. So we haven't done, uh, we haven't gotten that perfectly right yet. So now the PR2 is using a circle detector to find the plate and it will lift it. So here's also the fingertips. I'm just waiting for the fingertips to touch it. You see it's very like, it takes very delicate touch. I give back to the touch. Just, <coughs> you saw that it was just going to the plate until it touched. This is also what we humans do, I think. We only have like, the, we have pretty good vision, but it's just easier to go to the table and then move until we touch it. And this fingertips, they actually manage to, to tell me when I just have a very slight touch, and the dynamic is really like up to 150 newton, which is the maximum force of the glucose. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Alex is okay. Okay, so, and now, um, somebody will be lucky and will be able to eat robotic punches first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look very hungry. <laughs> I guess uh, something that is different about this task 
we in previous demos we used to talk, uh, show pick and place, but now we have a real time constraint because the pancake burns <laughs> if something doesn't work. Okay, so um, okay, work. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. okay.